So today on the bench we've got my Advantist R6581T, my eight and a half digit multimeter. A little project I've been wanting to do this for a while is dealing with the display. It's been quite a complex thing trying to get to that point where I've been trying to decide do I try and build something from scratch myself or do I hope that somebody else comes up with a solution. Well, whilst I was procrastinating about that, someone else came up with a solution. Mickle T on EV book forum, he's done a lot of reverse engineering work on these units and he's done circuit diagrams and all sorts of stuff and he's put a huge amount of effort into it. He does a massive amount of credit because he's put thousands of hours into working on these things. Part of what he's just done recently is a display driver to use a different kind of display. So I'm going to show you what I've got in mind. So I've done videos about this movie set before. When I first got it, it had faults and I fixed those faults and got it all working. And then the display was really dark and I did some work on it and got the display better to the point where it's actually usable before it wasn't usable. When I first got it, you couldn't even see it. <laughs> you could barely even see there's anything there. So I got to the point now where I can see the display there. The camera still doesn't like it too much, but it is there. If I turn one of these lights off, I might see a bit better. There you go. There is a display there. It isn't great. It's there. Okay, it is actually working. It's not great. It ain't going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. I want to basically replicate what Mickle T has done. So he published a code and everything using an SCM32 blue pill. Now I've never used an SCM32 and I had to get the software for it and figure out how to use it and that sort of stuff. And I've already programmed this. Haven't tested it yet, don't know if it works yet. I'm going to basically follow his instructions that he's written and try and at least hook it up. I'm not going to take the display out yet. It's going to hook this up to it with a display and see if the display shows the correct thing. Because if it does, then I can move on to the next step, which is actually replace this display with another one. But one step at a time, first thing, make sure I can actually get the work. So I've got various displays and options here. So I've got a few different displays which are the same, just different colours. You've got yellow green and blue and these are what Mikkel T has used is one of these ones these are much smaller than the original different size completely but they work and they've been proven to work but it's got a little flex connector there so it might be possible to set that to a different display and just run it off there but that's one option I also purchased some other ones and this is basically the same thing as those just a different one different brand basically the same though and also got this much larger screen, which I believe someone else has used. And this is much closer to the original size, but it only just fits, I believe, it only just shoehorns in there. And interfacing this one could be a bit more interesting. I've also got this other display here, which I think is completely wrong, just something I got, because I saw it there. I think this is probably way too big to fit. Yeah, that definitely won't fit. So this is just something else I got, which I thought could be a useful thing to have, maybe, because it was cheap. You know, you never quite know what displays you're going to use in the future, and sometimes you just get these little quirky ones, you can maybe find a use for it. And in this box, I've got some drivers, so I've got an adapter here for an Arduino, a little header adapter thing, but I don't think that's what's going to be used, I think it's going to be more like this which is used. Don't know how to hook this up yet. <laughs> it's got flexes on it, and maybe I'll have to use this with this, I, I honestly don't remember. Yeah, those might go together, and then this one goes to the display. I honestly can't remember. I didn't really know what I was going to be getting with this and, and what I was going to be building. This driver board here, I think, was for this display. I got a display, and I thought, right, well, I'll get stuff to use that display as well, but I really need to figure out what I'm actually doing with it. That may or may not even get used. No idea. But we'll start off with the display I know works, which is what Mikkel 2 used. And go from there, so it's one of these ones which we'll use and hook up to the STM32, wire that into the back panel here on the, on the connections on the back panel and if we're really lucky I'll get a display that works and then we can move on. So remove the front panel, it's not too hard, to take the screws out, remove, release these two ribbon cables carefully. Now we've got the access to the front panel and all we've got to do is wire some connections up to this. It's pretty straightforward. I need to get some little cables I'm going to use because it's all quite fine stuff in here, so I need quite small wires. Then I'll wire them onto this. Exactly how I'll do this here, I'm not quite sure. Whether I use some header pins or whether I wire directly onto it, I'm not quite sure yet. I'll have to look at that. But I need to refer back to the diagrams that Mikkel T had done and just make sure I get the correct connections and stuff like that. But yeah, this, this connection is just around here, I think it was. What it's doing is intercepting the data which is going to the shift registers here because those drive the display and it's sending the data to those and this 
is interpreting the code and then reformatting it for display on a different type of display. So again, thanks Michael T for doing all that work. That's a lot of effort. And that's basically what I was going to try and do is piggyback onto it and just try and decode it. And that's where my head was going. But I knew it was going to be a lot of work and I kind of didn't get around to it. And yeah, so Michael T did. Anyway, I'm going to get some wires and start hooking up to this. Well, I soldered wires on. I'll just push the front panel back into place, plugged it back in again. You know, this is kind of like a moment of truth thing. Is it going to work? Is it going to fail? Power cable's plugged in. Now, this could go horribly wrong or it could work, or nothing could happen. I programmed STM32, like I said, but I don't actually know if I got it right. I may have done. Let's find out. Hey, we have a display. It actually worked. It actually worked. I'm actually surprised. Not because of, you know, Bickle T's work. I trust that perfectly. Just wherever I could get this right myself, and I have. It's actually working. Brilliant. Well, that's good news. It does actually work. I didn't mess it up. Now, question is, can I use a different display? That's what I'd like to do. I'd like to use a bigger display. So now we can get it to work on this basic display, which is a bit small for my liking. No, that's okay, but it would be nice if it was bigger. Now we've got the basic step done. Let's see if I can do with a bigger display. So here's the connections I did just temporarily to do this testing. So we got a few wires shoved in here. I went to this IC pin over here because it's like a nice table point. Um, the actual diagram show going to this resistor array, but this is easier to sold onto. We've also got these two end resistors here. Oh, slightly out of focus. There you go. There's two end resistors right there. All right, those are connected to. Underneath that, there's a capacitor. Seeds. See the marking there, C2, and that's a positive and negative going to that. Um, that's the 5 volt rail supply. So the right hand side is the negative 0 volt rail, and left hand side is the 5 volt rail. So there's connected to that, and I've just laid it all down. I'm going to take this board out now. Now I know it works, I'm going to take this out, remove the VFD. That is a mission, it's got loads of pins, this is going to take ages, and um. Once I've done that, I have to look at mounting the display and this board somehow with better wiring. This obviously this is all just temporary wiring to test it to prove it actually worked. It worked, so now I'm comfortable about stripping this out and moving on to the next stage and actually doing it. I mean, it would still be nice to put the bigger display in, this one here. All right, it would definitely be nice to use this one. This is an adapter board. It kind of converts from SPI 4-wire to 3-wire, which is what comes with it. So the display plugs in here. This connector here plugs into the Arduino header ball. This one here plugs into that. Then you can plug this into an Arduino and drive the display. Obviously, you know, it's just an adapter. I saw it's doing is adapting. Maybe voltage conversion. I don't know what chips are. But they're probably level shifters. So, I mean, it's probably possible for me to design a board with that connector on it, allow me to do that. This will pick it back onto the back of the display, right? So I can put it on the back of the display. So it would be nice to use this one. I'm not going to worry about it just now. I'm just going to do what I can with what I've got. I want to kind of future proof it as well if I can. This has also got these pins which stick out the back which are no good. I need to take all those off. And I'm hoping I've got enough room there to stick them sideways instead. There may be enough room to do that. I'll have to look. If I can go sideways instead, use a right angle connector, and I can use a ribbon cable going onto it. There might be room for that. I'm not quite sure. It's pretty skinny in the back there. It might be possible to stand this off slightly more. I mean, the buttons do stick out enough. Not keen on doing that, though. It's probably a bit tricky. So I'm going to see what I can do with it. I mean, worst case, I just have to be wired straight on with no connectors, which isn't that big a deal. I like to have things with connectors on. So if your display you know, fails after a period of time, just unplug it, plug a new one in, carry on. Not a big deal. Uh, this is still a lot of work to do yet. I mean, I've done, so far, it's proved it does actually work in my system, and I haven't got any mistakes made. I've, you know, I managed to get that programming correctly working, and... You know, that's all good. The display on this is a compromise. Some of the words are shorter and things like that. So, like, the enunciators are different. They're not quite as they were originally. That's the compromise that Mikkel T had to do is in order to get stuff to fit on this display. So, if I get a bigger display, there's more options there for doing that too. Making that look a bit nicer. But, um, yeah, I was going to do this one to start with. And then I'll maybe upgrade it again later on once I get more detail or figure out how to get that other one working nicely. So, trying to move the display is a bit tricky. Anyway, I'm going to... Um, I've put some fresh solder down in there, but I can't get onto 
the pins are merely soldering gun because the pin spacing is a bit close. So what I'm doing right now is just trying to remove the adhesive that's on the back here. It's got like a double sided pad. So I'm just sticking some IPA down it and uh, just trying to get that to release. You know, there's different ways of doing it. So first thing is get the adhesive gone. So that's not an issue anymore. That's what these little thin spudgers come in handy for. Getting down the backs of things like this so you don't damage things. A bit more IPA and it will uh, come right in the end. A bit fiddly but we'll get there. So what I have to do is in order to be able to desolder these is I've got my smallest desoldering tip. I've had to file the sides off a little bit to make it a little bit narrower so I can get into these pins and that's actually working now. I'm actually starting to get some progress now so I've desoldered up to there so far. I did try using wick and wick just wasn't doing it but it's working. Now I've modified the tip. It's doing a job which is a bit of a pain but it's what you have to do sometimes. So I'm probably about a third of the way there now. See it's gradually getting there. Um, one thing I did as well to make this easier is I went through and I cut off all the pins to make them shorter. Shorter pins are easier to desolder, so um, I have to make sure that like, I've got little stray piece floating around here, get rid of that. But uh, sometimes I'll just make it easy for yourself. Might as well show you what I'm doing, I suppose. It's been a bit of a pain because it is really fine work. Pin pitch is very small. Once I've desoldered it, what I have to do is go back and make sure that it's actually released. It's not stuck to the side of the through hole. But uh, yeah, it's a long, tedious process, as you can see. Well, I think I've desoldered all the pins. Let's see if it falls out, shall we? There we go, got it. Now, I'm going to be careful with this because obviously the display does still work. Obviously you're going to put this somewhere safe, put it on the side as a really weak but working display. You never know, it may be useful something one day. And uh, I'll have to figure out how I'm going to lay out the new one on here. A bit more progress, I've got all that cleaned up, I've got the display mounted, it's double sided tape, I saw it's holding on there. I've lined it pretty centrally, I've got it shifted downwards slightly because the display itself is offset. So, ribbon cable soldered on, took the headers off, run a ribbon cable around, just running around the top. That might be visible from the front panel, but that's okay, because what I'll do is I've got some um, black felt tape, and I'll put that over here, around these edges, to try and hide everything, so it'll look a bit better. You won't be able to see it in the end. And I've also done the same thing with this, I've also taken the headers off the FCM32. So that's also ready to go, I'll put double sided tape on that as well. I'm going to mount that on top of these chips, just like this. I've also got the ribbon cable running up as well, which I'm going to run between those, I think. I think I'm going to run it between them. I'm not quite sure exactly where I'm going to run it yet. I might even run it up that side. really depends on how these cables fit because they are a bit tight in here. These little flexes that come in. And they are somewhat fragile so you want to be careful of those. I'd rather put this out of the way from those original flexes so it's not pushing on them. And this is obviously I'm going to stick it you know, anywhere. I'm going to stop so I tape it down where it needs to go. This is the programming header so I need to keep that accessible because I need to reprogram it. Um, maybe an update or something to the film in the future, who knows. So I need to keep that accessible, also got the USB port accessible. I'm, I'm going to try and position it so that I can plug a USB port in without taking the flexes out. I mean, I don't know if that's really going to matter. I've only programmed it through this anyway, I haven't actually used a USB port at all yet, apart from powering it up once, just to see if it powered up from that. But anyway, that's there. So obviously that's the display ribbon cable. I'm, I've got to run power cables, and there's power right here. So that's actually 5 volts right there. At that point there and the zero volts right here so I can run the five ground the five volt ground from here so to there and to there you know to those two points barely in shot on I so like there to there and that's five volts or I could run it back over here and over to these points where they come in over here as well I could do it either way if there's another ground point over there I could always run that ground down over here that's also possible nice and short um, but then I've also got to need the three data lines that come in, which come over here as well, which I need to run back down this way. So I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to do that yet, whichever way is going to be the tiniest, but I've only just got to this point here, and I thought I'd just record some video showing you where I'm up to. I think I'm at the point now where I could probably stick it down, get it secured again, and then probably do the power cables next, 
and because I think it's this point right here right there is a 5 volt in and ground is somewhere else so I don't suppose ground will got me out here ready to go ground let's go to ground point there you go there's a ground right there so there's the ground and this one here is the 5 volt in somewhere is that one yes it is there we go Right, so that's 5 volt in, that's 0 volts. So between those two points, I could just run wires from there, even really run down to there. I don't know, I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to do this yet. I want to try and keep clutter around from here as much as I can, because of obviously those little flexors, which are awkward to deal with. And obviously I'll still run three wires down to the digital circuitry down here. I've got this little Teflon wire stuff here, I've got this quite thin Teflon wire. I've got a few different colours. So I think I'll use this to run those little jumper wires just to be a bit tidier. Well I think I'm just about there. Um, I've put some jumper wires into here using these nice Teflon wires. I've just stuck that down. I've got the ground. I've actually got a solid ground going to the ground point here. I've got a jumper. It could be handy for hooking up test points. And this one here is the 5 volt going in to one of those other points over there. That one's not quite so tidy but you know it's probably be right. So I think that's basically it. I mean the only thing I haven't really done is verified I haven't got any misconnections you know, or got anything cross-wired, there's anything I haven't done yet, I'm, I'm going to sit down and do that first. And if that seems okay, I will put it in the casing and plug it in, and if we're lucky, it still works. Alright, so I've put the black tape around there, so that's that way you can't see any of the surround. It's like a felt stuff, I've got two different widths, I've got a narrow one and a wide one. So, i put them both on there, I've got the wide on and the narrow down the edges here. I'll put some adhesive down, hold the wires down, so a bit of strain relief. And I might need to manipulate this one a little bit yet, so we'll see where we go. Right, I think I'm just about ready to put it in there. I'll take this film off here, make sure it's clean, make sure the inside that's clean, and I can put it back together. And hopefully it works. Well, I'll put all the screws in, so that's bound to mean it's going to be disastrous. So, does it work? I don't know. It better work after all this. It's working. Excellent. I didn't screw it up and I redesigned it. <laughs> so the final version is working and it's in there and that's great. Brilliant. So I've now got a nice display and the camera can even see it with an, under all these lights. So let's turn this light here off. It will stand out a little bit more. Right. That's much better. It's still dimmer than I like but obviously it's got a tinted screen so you know and that drops it off slightly but that's still way better than I originally had. I can read that really easily. So it would still be nice to have the big screen in here. And I may revisit this later on and change the screen. I don't know. We'll see how we go with that. But I think I'm just going to live with this for the time being and see how this goes. Well, here you go. One volt in. Obviously, this will warm me up. This thing takes hours to warm up. So I've only just turned it all on. So it's out a little bit. But it's drifting downwards. So... Thanks a lot, Michael T, for the effort you've put into doing this. It's brilliant. Helped all of us Adventist owners out by a significant amount. I may have been able to figure this out myself. I was one of the things I planned to do. But thanks to Michael T, I didn't have to sit there and spend days and days reverse engineering all that section and try and figure out how to implement it. Would have been a nightmare. So if you're interested in doing this yourself, because you've got one of these, obviously you've got my video to give you a little bit of a guide, but look at the EV blog page, which I'll link down below to Michael T's post, and he's got the code and everything there for anything. They'll install the STM software, program the STM32, and hook it up like I have. He's got recommended displays and all sorts of stuff on there as well. So, yeah, it's all there. I mean, it's allowed me to do this. I'm happy with it. I mean, it might be that a different colour screen will look better on here. I mean, I've chosen green. I had yellow as well. Yellow might come through the tint a bit better, maybe. I don't know. I may have chosen the wrong colour. But I'm not too worried. I've got a screen which now works and is much more readable than the original one. Even to the point where you can see it on camera now. I'm happy with that. Check out the links down below. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed over here. Patreon spot link over there to help me buy maybe another 8.5 digit multimeter eventually. One day. Catch you later.